Hello and welcome to the Good Shepherd United Methodist Church, our online worship service for June 1st and 2nd of 2024. My name is Pastor Tom. Pastor Leah will be coming to join us shortly. Um, Angel Dobson did our video recording and Susie Nally played our lovely prelude. Thank you for being here with us today in worship. It's good to be together with the Lord and to praise and to prayer, be in prayer and praise and hear his word. We worship together on Saturday evenings at 445 in the chapel. On Sunday mornings, we worship at 10 a.m. in the sanctuary. We also have grief share offered every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Everyone in the community is welcome to be part of this wonderful program for all who are dealing with grief, whether you're a church member or not, whether you're a Christian or not. It's not required for any of that. It is simply a time to heal and to be together and to share and to grow through the griefs we suffer. Our Alzheimer's Caregivers Support Group We'll next meet on Wednesday, June the 12th at 1 p.m. here at the church. This is a group for the caregivers of those struggling with Alzheimer's. It is uh, sponsored by the Alzheimer's Association of Southwest Florida. Again, it's open for the church as well as for the whole of the community. We serve the community in a lot of ways, but one of our biggest efforts is in cooperation with the All Souls Episcopal Church. On Tuesday mornings, we meet to prepare items to be distributed on Wednesday to the 200 or so folks who come from our zip code areas to receive food from Harry Chapin Food Bank, groceries, also a hot meal if that's needed. Um, we supply hygiene products, soaps and uh, paper goods. Others provide prayer and counseling and other resources that are needed for those who are in our community who are unable to, uh, even though they work, provide all that they need for their family. We are online in many formats. We are on uh, Facebook. You can see the address there. We have a YouTube channel, a little bit different address. Make sure you note the difference. Then we also have a web page, uh, which is in yellow, which you can always find updated information on the church website, and then we have a giving platform for online giving. It is through the My Well Giving app, and you can see the address there, goodshepherdumc.mywell.org slash give. If you go to that website, you'll see the church's information and name, and fill out the information and press submit in any way you want to give, how much you want to give, and you receive a receipt. Uh, just as you have requested, so you, just what you would need. Pastor Leah is now going to come and read for us the psalm of the week, which is verses from Psalm 139. Pastor Leah, Psalm 139. Good morning, dear church family and friends. Peace be with you. Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my laying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hand me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book. 
before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts. God, how vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they will outnumber the grains of sand. When I, aw when I awake, I am still with you. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We come to our time of joys and concerns. If you would like for us to pray with you or for you, please contact the church office by phone, email, um, and we will receive your prayer request, and we'll be glad to pray with you. Um, if you would like for us to share your prayer request, you would need to let us know that. Otherwise, we will hold it dear to our hearts. Um, thank you for the opportunity to pray for you and to be an intercessor. Let us now join together in the pastoral prayer, the prayers to the people, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you, God, for being our God. For we know that you are always on time. For you created time before you even created us. Gracious God, we give thanks that you don't waste time. For all time is perfectly in your control and you direct and use all time. As you have created time, you also teach us what it looks like to make good use of our time here on earth. Jesus lived a rhythm of work and rest and attention to you, great God. Lord, we confess that we are too aware that our time is limited. We know that our time must be managed. We lose track of our time. We abuse our time to the point where we must pause now to remember who our time actually belongs to. For Lord, our time belongs to you. Our time spent in your presence is time well spent. In Sabbath, we recognize how you, O oh Lord, are helping us through our weaknesses. In Sabbath, we experience your presence, your power, and your peace. Our time under God puts us, puts work, rest, and self-care into perspective. Lord, enable us to use our time to experience your mercy, your grace, and to share all which we have received from you with others. Enable us to use our time to build your kingdom on earth, that we would always seek to be in your presence and doing your work. Lord, hear our prayers for all who are realizing the close of their time among us. Hear our prayers for all who are overwhelmed with fear about time, the times to come or the times of the past. Thank you, God, for time to be with you and under you and time to share you with others. Hear these and all our prayers offered in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and deliver us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We give thanks for all the tithes and gifts and offerings which are given to the Good Shepherd United Methodist Church. It is by your support that we are able to be in ministry. Thank you for your support. Let us hear the Word of God today from the Gospel of Mark, the second chapter, verses 23, through the third chapter, verse 6. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some of the heads of grain. The Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for the priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Another time, Jesus went into the synagogue, and a man with a a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, which is lawful on the Sabbath? to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill. But they remained silent. He looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our sermon today, our presentation is called Rule Breaking. I got to ask a question. You think it's okay to play golf on a Sunday? Is it okay to have to go into work on a Sunday? And and what is this Sabbath that we hear about so much in the Scriptures? Because Jesus even says in verse 27, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. That's what Jesus said. You see, the Sabbath was made for the benefit of the people. We were not made to be in obedience to the Sabbath. It is for our benefit that there is a Sabbath. You see, the Sabbath is designated intentional rest, reflection, and worship of God. And we, all people, need this day of rest to remind us of who we are and whose we are. It is for our benefit that there is Sabbath. Sabbath is one of the subjects of today's scripture, but Jesus says a lot more, and the results of all of that he has to say really have very little to do with time spent at work. The real message here, I believe, is about the abuse of power and authority by a few, 
in this case the Pharisees, over the larger community of all believers and for the benefit of those few. So how do I know that this is really about power and abuse? You just have to read the last verse. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. Simply walking through a field, healing a man's hand. What are these serious offenses that would cause people to want to kill Jesus? What's going on here? You see, the powerful Pharisees and the Herodians, by these just two events and by all that's around them, decide that they are now completely opposed to Jesus. They are angry enough that they begin to plot to kill him. Now, this is just the third chapter of the Gospel of Mark. we got 13 more to go. We know who the bad guys are and why they want to stop Jesus quickly in Mark's short Gospel. You see, simply put, Jesus has authority beyond their capacity or imagination. And since they can't compete or comprehend anything beyond themselves and their own interests, their response to Jesus, rather than joy that the Son of Man has arrived, is actually to destroy Jesus. If Jesus, in their perspective, if Jesus is not benefiting them, then Jesus is invalid. And Jesus must, therefore, be stopped because their interests are the most important interests. So let's look at what goes on in the day's scripture. Jesus out Pharisees, the Pharisees, in the first exchange. The Pharisees attempt to intimidate Jesus and the disciples by basically trumping up a bogus charge of breaking some vague Sabbath laws. Kind of like people are bogusly cited for breaking minor traffic laws and then great difficulties, great troubles come out of that. These disciples just simply crossed a field against the right away, and they touched the grain as they were walking by and snapped off a few grains. The Pharisees witness this offense, and they seek to demean Jesus and his followers. You see, Jesus and his followers, the disciples, they're new in town, and they needed to be put in the proper place. But Jesus, skillful, yet inaccurate response stops the Pharisees because, you see, the Pharisees don't really even know the rules themselves. They do not know the history of King David either. Jesus basically bluffs them better than what they accuse Jesus. So they retreat, offended that Jesus has put them in their place. You see, if you read the scriptures carefully, King David never took the holy bread from the temple. He asked for bread and received it, but he never took it from the temple. He never raided the temple, as Jesus kind of implies. But Jesus' argument sounds more convincing. And since the Pharisees really don't know what they're talking about, they're just talking he beats them. He challenges their authority, and they don't like it. Now, in the synagogue, there is a similar power play being expressed. It is certainly not against the law to heal, even on the Sabbath day. It's certainly not against the law to heal within a synagogue. Jesus simply heals the man 
in the face of the Pharisees, doing again what they cannot do, and everyone in the synagogue sees it because Jesus has the man stand up in front. Jesus is reminding the Pharisees of the law of God, which is their concern. It's in Deuteronomy 4.31, which says plainly, For the Lord your God is a merciful God. That is the law. God is a merciful God. You see here, it's not that Jesus is breaking rules, but actually Jesus is displaying mercy as the best use of the rules of the law to share God's love. The Pharisees, again, are embarrassed because their power, their authority is diminished before the people and they cannot stand it. They don't care anymore about the rules or the man who is being healed. They don't celebrate him at all. They only care about themselves. And that is the issue which is at stake here. So I got to ask, what do we care about more? What do we really care about? Do we care about faithfully following Jesus or taking care of all the I, me, mine, us agendas that we have? That's a tough question, but it is a very worthy question. Because you see, faithfully following Jesus means that we're going to go all the way to the cross with him to enter the kingdom of God. If you want to take care of I, me, mine, us, that means that we get to live another day without God's kingdom being realized. But you'll have what you want, but you'll be very alone. The proposition is awesomely frightening because we all like rules. We all love, like rules very much. It's a frightening position to be in. We like rules on the one hand. We love Jesus. We are all in this church responsible for the operation and the welfare of this church. There are rules that we must follow. We also faithfully follow Jesus, since we claim to be disciples of Jesus. We're well aware of that calling, and we have scriptures to obey, but we have rules to follow. I'm aware of this. I feel this tension as pastor in my leadership and my discipleship. Jesus is Lord even over the Sabbath. Jesus heals all afflictions to the glory of God, even on the Sabbath. God has given the law and the rules, and God is a merciful God. So now then, what rule do we live by? Well, that question, I think, for me, is answered in Mark, the 12th chapter, verses 29 to 31, where Jesus was actually asked this question. He said, the most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second rule is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
There is no commandment greater than these. This love the Lord phrase is, appears 164 times in the Bible. That's really important. It must be important that we love God with all that we have and that equally we love our neighbors as ourselves. Because Jesus says, this is the greatest rule, the rule of love. Love the Lord. And that rule will never break. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Pastor Lee will now come and offer us words of blessing and benediction. Creator God, we praise your holy name. We thank you for this wonderful time of worship. We thank you for calling us to keep the Sabbath, to worship and to rest. Lord Jesus, we come with humble hearts to love you. We pray for healing of our bodies, minds, spirits, and relationships. Holy Spirit, Guide us to share the love and the mercy of God with all our neighbors and with all persons that we encounter. We pray for your peace to abide with us, with our families, and we pray for peace upon our country. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, God is here to bless you. May the love of God our Father, the mercy of Jesus Christ our Savior, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be upon you today and always. Shalom, my friends. Go now in peace.